Harmony Plus 美国成长路上的 GPS， 欢迎大家来到我们第二百一十一期微课堂。我们每周为大家带来分享，从二零一六年三月开始，风雨无阻，从不间断。在过去的二百一十期微课堂中，已经有名校招生官、就业指导中心负责人、赞美学生以及家长，带来了他们精彩的分享。希望可以用这些在美国的学习、工作、生活、发展等真实案例，为大家带来更多的真知灼见，走出误区。如果您在收听我们的微课堂中有任何问题，欢迎您及时私信我们的倪梦石老师，倪梦石老师会竭力回答您的疑问。谢谢支持。呃，我们本次的这个微课堂是一个小时，一个小时之后呢，会有这个二十分钟的 Q&A 提问的环节，呃，给到我们这个在 Zoom 参与的朋友们。啊、呃，朋友们，如果在期间呢有任何问题，可以的通通过 Zoom 这个私信的形式发给我们的 Cassie 韩，他将会。呃，收录大家所有的问题，我们会在这个六点钟结束以后一起去回答。嗯 ，All right. Um, I would like to give everybody a warm welcome, uh, for today's like online webinar. And then today's talk show gonna be like how to write outstanding college application essays. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really excited because today is really special, and also I can work with a、uh, Lenia, like our start coaches, yeah.、Um, uh, give me a second. Let me like, introduce a little bit about Harmony Plus.、Uh, we are the official partnership with the leading universities and institute in United States, such as UC Berkeley and Stanford,、uh, Stanford International Research Institution, and also San Jose State. We are offering the like the programs to the outstanding local and international students. As we all know, we have the different like programs. We have academic programs. We have the soft skill programs, and also we have the professor research programs.、Um, I can give you some like general things about our like、um, academic programs. We have reading and writing and、um, AP preparation, SAT, ACT preparation, and also we have the crack cracking the college essays. Um, about our soft skills, we have the future entrepreneur、um, entrepreneur programs, and also we have the public speaking programs, and also we have some professional research programs such as data strategy and strategic marketing. If you have any questions, just let us know, and then we will answer your questions about all the programs we are offering. Yeah. And also, we have the most important like things to the students. We have the college. Uh, counseling, we call it future planning. We already have lots of students to get their dreams schools offers, and hope I can we can help more family students in the future. Yeah, and for the like Harmony Plus, we have the unique like learning modules. We call the hybrid modules. We have the online, offline schools, students, theory and practice,、uh, pr practice, and also the education and services. We help. We can use all the programs,、uh, college counseling, and our unique learning module to help more students and family for their like future. And let me let me like introduce our guest speaker today, Miss Lenia. She is our senior education coach at Harmony Plus, and also she got the, oops, sorry, and also she got the. A、uh, bachelor degree from Yale University, and also the master degree from UCLA and the San Jose State.、Uh, she had over 15 years for the writing instruction and also academic coaching. She helps a lot of students to help their undergraduate and graduate programs for their application. And also the most important things is all the students to get the offers beyond their expectation. And also, Lenia is familiar with the Bay Area's parents and students, and make them outstanding. Let's welcome Lenia. Hello, hi. Thank you so much for that kind introduction, Betty, Becky.、Um, I'm really happy to be here, and I'm excited to get started、uh, telling you what we're here for the day, for the evening, actually. So.、Um, uh, I'm first of all really excited about the numbers of people that we have here on the webinar today. 
Um, I have been coaching for quite some time doing college admissions, consulting, and college essay specialization. And I am particularly fond of working with students who are in the Bay Area and across the country. But in the Bay Area, we often have a lot of people who experience a lot of pressure about coming out of this really specific um, competitive college application environment. And so I just want to acknowledge that my understanding is that a good number of people on this, uh, this meeting today are local to the San Francisco Bay Area. I am myself in San Francisco um, and uh, have taught down in the uh, San Mateo counties and Santa Clara counties for quite some time. And so I just wanna say that I acknowledge uh, the, the, the pressures and, um, and all of the concerns that come into the college application process that everyone here probably has. And this is true whether or not you are local to this area or anywhere in the country. So. Let me just go over what the agenda is for this call today. Um, first of all, we're going to talk about the importance of the college essays. Some things have shifted for all of us around the world in our lives, and the role of the college essays in the college admissions process has shifted as well. Um, common worries that come up when writing the essays, these are worries that students have. We also have worries that parents have, and so I want to talk about those, give you all an opportunity to share with us some of the worries that you have on your mind and see if I can address those today and, um, and just go into um, the mindset that we need when we approach this process. We'll then be talking about the different college essay types. There are specific types that you can count on to encounter during the application process. We'll also be talking about different essay prompts. Uh, we'll give a couple of examples of um, prompts that come from different applications to give you an overview of what that looks like. We'll also talk about some of the college essay writing do's and don'ts. So um, we don't have time today to get into all of the specific details, uh, the nitty gritty of what a writer needs to do when they approach the essay, which can come into technique and style, but we'll talk about some big picture do's and don'ts that everybody here uh, can, can take with them to think about as they approach this process and then to learn from there. And then we will wrap up with a discussion about how Harmony Plus can help and how I can help as well, and also a Q&A that will open up the conversation to everyone. So um, I am really excited to be here and I can't wait to dive into this. So we will start with this. Why should we start writing the college essays now? Um, the applications do not for the most part officially open until over the summer, usually late July, early August. Um, although many of the college essay prompts remain same, the same from year to year, sometimes there are some adjustments that come up. So sometimes people might be asking the question, often students who want to put it off a little bit, sometimes you might be asking the question, why should we do this now? Um, you know, we're not at senior year yet, but if you're on this call, you probably think it's important as I do. Um, the college application essay has always been a very important a part of the process. Uh, colleges use, a, a, most, most colleges use a holistic admissions process where they take test scores and grades and activities and the essays and um, the overall rigor of the student's course schedule into consideration when they're evaluating a student. And so the essay is just one part of that. Now, um, that's always been important. What I have seen over the years is that a student who may be weak in particular areas may able to, and if they're a really skilled writer, can almost write their way into certain programs that might be a little bit higher um, in terms of the, their target admissions level, something that they might not have gotten into otherwise if it weren't for the quality of the writing. So the application essay is this one opportunity for students to um, basically open the door. To, to allow the student to walk into the room and become a real person for the admissions officer. And, um, and, and that's a really important thing. So if you imagine that admissions officers have piles of applications that they're reading, and in many schools, particularly in the UCs, they have, um, people will have batches of students that they're responsible for, for reviewing and people select a section of that and then they come together and they review them. And so there is a um, process where students get eliminated as they go. Um, if, a, if an admissions reader has the opportunity to read an essay that makes them go, wow, I can feel who this student is. I'm really curious about this person. And you know, even if their, their, their scores were not great, or, or maybe they got a couple of, of not so fabulous grades here at one particular time in school, I like their character. Uh, this was refreshing. It stood out in a different way. I just read 50 essays, and this one is the one that made me sort of wake up and go, wow, that was really exciting. Um, that is the difference between somebody rooting for you 
with their application, with your application in their hand, and somebody being like, oh yeah, this is interesting, but okay, the grades are good, but I have like 10 other students who look just like this next, right? So the college application essay from that fundamental already has that power. Now, we're here today because the essay is um, even more important today than it has been before. So COVID-19 has impacted the application process, and that is enough conversation for a whole other webinar, right, the details of that. But what I'll highlight today is that the application process has impacted it in a couple of ways that I'm sure many of you are already familiar with. The number one is, is that many of you are sheltering in place and school is canceled. Um, if not for the rest of the year, at least for a couple of months. So, so I think for most people listening, it's actually probably canceled for the rest of the year, okay? Or that announcement might be coming soon. So with that in mind, what happens, right? College admissions officers are already scrambling to figure out um, how do they consider junior year for this next year of admissions when everything, the traditional process, has all, all of a sudden been thrown into disarray. Typically speaking, when you're working with a student, you're saying that junior year, that junior year is really important. You know, you want those grades second semester to look fabulous because um, as the student matures from sophomore year to junior year to senior year, uh, the, the weight of, of their performance in school, particularly if it's consistent or if it's getting better, becomes even more important. So you might have a student who is like, oh my goodness, I was doing so well this year and my sophomore year wasn't great. And all of a sudden I'm going to have pass fail grades instead of a letter grade for second semester of junior year. That might be really disappointing. So the point is, is that second semester grades, um, the schools are going to be reorienting themselves to figure out how to consider those and also to, um, take into consideration the different ways that uh, different schools will be managing that essentially. So they have to figure that out. What that probably means is that most grades from the junior, second semester junior year um, will not have the same weight that they would have had before. That's a long explanation for bullet point one. Bullet point two, the standardized testing process has also been changed. Again, many of you probably know that we've had uh, the May SAT has already been canceled. June SAT date, I believe, at least as of a couple of days ago, might still have been on schedule, but uh, there's kind of some strong possibility that it might not be there later too. So you have to keep checking the college board to see what the latest is on this. But the point is the standardized testing process has been thrown into disarray. What I will say uh, is that within the UC system, which has typically been consistently test SAT, ACT required, is now going uh, test optional. Just as an aside, test optional does not mean um, test uh, will not be considered, test blind. So test blind means if you send the scores, it doesn't matter if you send them or you don't send them, they will ignore it. Test optional means if you submit the scores, they'll consider it, um, but everybody doesn't have to submit it. My understanding is that the UCs will be test optional. So if you have scores, you'll still be able to use them. If you don't have them, you won't be, you know, you may, may or may not be able to get them. This does give students some flexibility if they don't love standardized testing, but again, it becomes a data point that the um, admissions system has to re-scramble. We don't quite know what this is all gonna look like. Um, we do know more schools will be test optional, and as a result, uh, just kind of knowing that you've got a really strong score, your score falls into this category. So I'm gonna do something really bad. I'm gonna mute a couple things, there we go. Um, so I'm just going to actually say really quickly, if you happen to have your uh, microphone unmuted, you can click mute. Periodically, if I hear something, I'll probably just press mute to, just to make sure that we have clear sound. Sorry. Um, so that the testing process may be test optional. Long story short, your SAT scores may or may not play the same role or the ACT scores. Um, this also impacts the AP exams. Lots of diesels, we could talk about that. Students should be getting information about APs from their schools themselves, from their AP teachers. Um, but everything's been changed. Now, the third thing I want to highlight is, is that extracurricular opportunities have been shifted. Many of the juniors that I typically work with, um, this is the time when we start talking about, well, did you really demonstrate a passion for that particular major that you think you're going to put on your application process? And some students say, yes, I've been doing that for three years. Other students say, no, I've done nothing to show that I want to major in mechanical engineering, right? So this summer, um, and even during the semester, students' extracurricular activities were typically something that they would be building towards to uh, support their applications. And now, all of a sudden, they don't have um, 
they can't necessarily count on summer programs being there. Some people will have them, some people won't. People are still applying to summer activities, uh, to different programs, but they might be canceled. We really don't know what the future looks like. So again, there's a shift about what um, weight activities can play. I do wanna say, still encourage all students to do what you can to develop your interests, uh, find on ways of digging, uh, online ways, I'm sorry, of digging more deeply into the things that you excite you. Um, but again, these things become fuzzier than they were in the past. So with all of that in mind, the college essay becomes more important and um, it's this opportunity that you have to highlight something about yourself and we want to encourage students to really work with that. Um, so the next thing here is, is what do students worry about? I think when we're entering the writing process or any learning process, we want to actually sit there and say, um, what are people afraid of? Uh, what are the stories we tell ourselves about something that is unknown when we're starting a new endeavor? The college application process is no different. The college essay writing process is no different. People come in with a lot of ideas, a lot of things they've heard um, from student boards, from older siblings or friends who got into colleges or didn't get into colleges, from parents. There's a lot of information floating out there. And so um, one thing that we want to do through Harmony Plus is to dance, dismantle the unnecessarily unnecessary confusion, get rid of the unnecessary information, and help you focus on what really is important, and then also just acknowledge some of the common fears. So this is what I often hear from students. I have no idea what to write, or I'm not very creative. What am I going to do? Um, nothing major or nothing serious is ever happened to me. So um, often people have this sense that, uh, they're, that, that the best college application essay is something that's about a trauma or something dramatic. Not necessarily true, so nothing major has ever happened to me. Um, I don't do a lot of activities. I, I don't know what I write, write about. I go to school, I go home, I do my homework, I don't have a lot to say. Um, or this one, my parents want me to write something else. That comes up often. Um, and uh, my friends don't like my essay. So we have students who are like, I've been working for months and, and they show their friends and the first friend says, nah, I don't like that, that's not exciting. Well, a friend is not necessarily a college admissions officer. So those are things to keep in mind. So these are the concerns that people come into this process about and the kinds of concerns that when we are coaching students with college essay, application essay writing, we're really trying to mitigate these and say, you know what, there is an answer for all of these. Yes, I have the exactly same like feeling like as Coach Lenia. Like if you have the same feelings, you can like raise your hand through Zooms and and also text to us, chat with us. Like what's your like biggest like concern about college assets or, or like about your kids, about your like assets, about everything. You can like keep text text us, chat with us, and then we can like collect all the questions and then we can answer like after this. Um, online webinar and then we'll have 20 minutes like special time to answering everyone's questions. Uh, yeah and as Lenny had mentioned we have lots of like things and need to concern and challenges and I would like to ask how to write outstanding essays. Yeah there's a um, I think the major thing that we're aiming for is how to stand out right? Yes exactly. So, it is. Exactly yeah. Um, so let's talk about one of the key points about standing out. Uh, I'll go back to this um, theme, which is imagine the reader has read 100 essays. Uh, in the case of a, a UC reader, they might have read 1,000 essays, right? Um, and, and yours comes onto their pile. Um, you want to stand out. And how do you stand out? It doesn't have to be dramatic, over the top, um, crazy. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be a perfect student who has won thousands of awards or you know, is going to the Olympics. It doesn't have to be any of that. What's really important is that authenticity actually cuts through things. You would be surprised at how many people spend time trying hard to present an image that is almost separate from who they are, that is not entirely accurate. That is, it might be accurate factually, but isn't really natural to who they are. And in doing that, they actually diminish the just genuine honesty and, and, and sense of feeling that we're talking to a real person who walked into the room. So I just want to say, start with the idea that every student has a story, we all do, and to write what you know. So students should be writing from the heart, things that are true to them, not trying to impress people, but actually genuinely talking about who they are. Second point is, is that the goal is to create a unique portrait 
of the student. So if you imagine um, when we are sitting in a room and a whole bunch of people walk in and we meet that person, we, we, you know, there are 100 people in the room and somebody comes up and introduces themselves. It doesn't matter if the person kind of looks similar to someone we have met before. It doesn't matter if they have the same profession or if they have the same passions as somebody we've met before. That person, when we shake their hand, um, when we used to shake hands, um, when we shake their hand, we, we basically get a sense of their unique quality, um, something that is distinctly them. And that's what we want to do with the essay as well, that there is something unique that is true to the student that really comes through, almost as if you're walking in and introducing yourself, and it's really clear to them that you're different from all of the other people in the room. In order to do this best, it is ideal that students are able to be self-reflective and self-aware. So I will say that self-reflection and self-awareness are actually required. Um, over the years, and this is a conversation I've had with other um, college consultants, that students who tend to perform better in the admissions process and the more competitive the school is that you apply to, so meaning it, it very much aligns with the more competitive schools. So if you're applying to the Harvard, Stanford, Princeton's of the world, this becomes even more important. The level of insight and ability to reflect on who you are as a person, to know what your place in the world is, to know what your values are and what matters to you, to know what you would fight for, for something, what you stand for, and to know um, how the things you're going to do in the future with college, how your education will help you further that sense of self, okay? Having that awareness, that maturity, is often what creates a stronger essay. And, um, and it's because, let's be fair, right? College applicants are usually 17 years old, 18 years old, right? Maybe 16, but generally about 17 years old. Um, we can't expect somebody who is 17 to have all of the worldly awareness and self-awareness that frankly many adults don't have. But it's one of those things that makes a difference in college essays. So in order to have a strong essay, we actually encourage students to begin developing these qualities over time, which is the next point here. Developing these qualities takes time. When a person is brainstorming for the college essay, they're just not you know, deciding, should I write about robotics or about orchestra or about my summer trip uh, to work for Habitat for Humanity? It's not just about those activities. It's about what did this mean to me? Um, what is the meaning that I have in my relationships with my family, with the world? So taking, developing these qualities and thinking about it and thinking about how to write about it takes time. So we really encourage starting early for that reason, just because there's a maturing process that happens. Also, developing outstanding writing skills also takes time. I will say that, I think I said it maybe a moment ago earlier, that I've seen students who've had weaknesses in their profiles write their way into more competitive schools than we might have expected. Um, Often that happens because students spend a lot of time developing their writing over months, or you have students who might be journalists already or, uh, or, or fiction writers already, and they are able to use their writing skills to make up for um, another academic weakness because they write really well. It is not fair, and it doesn't mean that you have to be a perfect writer. Um, that uh, just having a good writing skill, writing ability, puts you at an advantage in the application process, but it's simply a fact. So if writing is not your strength, it is something to really start thinking about sooner and begin to practice that. Uh, if writing is your strength, then you are lucky and let's make it even stronger. So developing outstanding writing skills takes time. If you come in in the fall with a lot of pressure of senior year and applications sitting in front of you and thinking about early applications and trying to figure everything out when you're busy, um, that's not the time to start working on your writing skills. Now is the time, if not before now, okay? So that's why we're here. And then the last point here is that better essays deliver better admissions results. I've said that multiple times, it's simply a fact. So what we're gonna talk about now to dive further into this are the college essay types. We have the common application personal essay, the coalition application personal essay, the University of California essays, writing supplements for individual colleges, writing supplements for special programs and majors. All right, so let's start with the personal essay, which is on the common application. Um, many of you might already be familiar with the personal essay. It is one essay that is distributed to all of the colleges on the common application. If you're not familiar with the common application, it is the application that is used, uh, it's a universal application. People can go in um, often through your school 
Um, you've been seeing the program Naviance very frequently. Students uh, have the list of colleges that they're applying to loaded up into the common application. They put in all of their data and they put in one particular essay and then also specific essays for the school. So that's what the common application is. It's common. Um, we'll, there are, so we'll just start there. On the common application specifically, there are seven essay prompts to choose from. You only respond to one of the seven prompts and the maximum length is 650 words. I will say, when students work with me, maximum length is 650 words. That's also generally minimum length. Okay, so um, if you are really diving deep into uh, your thoughts and being reflective and thinking about your life and taking full advantage of the power of the essay to present an aspect of yourself that's, that the admissions officers would not see otherwise, you want to use that space. You don't want to have filler, but you want to write well and use the space really wisely. So I will say if a student comes to me and they have a 400 word uh, common application essay, they simply haven't gone deep enough and are, 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 are missing an opportunity here. So for me, maximum length 650, and for me, minimum length is pretty much that as well. Um, the key purpose here is to reveal the student's unique character, experiences, interests, and strengths. We, like I said, there are seven application prompts. I just wanna highlight three of them to give you an example. These are sample ones from the common application. Um, generally speaking, the, they are consistent from year to year. I believe the common app is already, these are gonna be the prompts for the next coming year. So uh, here are three. The lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success. Recount a time when you faced a challenge, setback, or failure. How did it affect you and what did you learn from the experience? So this idea of obstacle, failure, growth, learning. Okay. Another one, describe a topic, idea, or concept you find so engaging that it makes you lose all track of time. Why does it captivate you? What or who do you turn to when you want to learn more? So this is somebody who might say they have a passion for, um, might be even abacus math, which is more distinct than just saying you love math, but they might really like abacus work. Um, or somebody who absolutely loves, uh, it, it can be anything. It could be um, music and harmony in music. And, and so you talk, it, it gives the, the application reader the sense to see what, how the student's mind works and what makes them excited. And the third one here, describe a problem you've solved or a problem you'd like to solve. It can be an intellectual challenge, a research query, an ethical dilemma, anything that is of personal importance, no matter the skill, scale. Explain its significance to you and what steps you took or could be taken to identify a solution. So this could be something from, uh, there was a, uh, a, let's see, a pollution, meaning um, people were, uh, were leaving waste around in our, in our town. So I joined the environmental club and I helped participate in solving a problem to have you know, our club do this initiative to improve something locally. That could be something. It could also be something very personal. Problem I solved was I consistently had arguments with my little brother because I always wanted to tell him what to do and thought I knew how best to teach him because I wanted to share something with him. And over time, it became a problem. I have learned to be a better brother and actually learned something about teaching by sharing my inspiration with him rather than telling him what to do. So the idea is it can be the scale, it can be anything, but it's about problem solving. Now, these are sample prompts. Um, there are others, there are four more typically, um, but you know, uh, any story that the student has can almost always be fit into one of these prompts. Now, we also have the coalition application. So the personal essay, coalition application. The common app and the coalition are very similar. They're structured a little bit differently. Um, it's interesting, uh, it's over the years, the overlap of the schools that use them has become more like greater. Uh, in the past, you would find that the coalition was more used frequently in the Midwest or at some of the bigger state schools in different places. It doesn't matter at this point. Um, you, there will be some schools that are only on the coalition um, or on their own school list. There'll be some schools that are primarily on the Common App. You don't really have to worry about which application it is because generally speaking, if you write one essay for one, you can work it for the other one as well. So coalition, similar to the Common App. One essay distributed to all of the colleges on the coalition application. There are five essay prompts to choose from for the coalition application. Keep in mind, oh, well, I'll say this afterwards. You can only respond to one uh, prompt and the recommended length here is, they say there's no limit and they recommend 500 to 550 words. So 
if you write a fabulous common app essay and you get to my minimum length, which is 650 words, then you can, I work with students and we just find a way to cut 100 words out to have a really solid one for the coalition application, basically to be about 550. So same essay. And um, as it says in that last point, common app and coalition app personal essays can be the same. What is important to know is that even though this one only has five prompts, the other one has seven prompts, um, almost every application for this personal essay type thing has one that basically says, tell us a story that's important to you. So you can kind of um, always, there's almost like a, a one prompt that allows you to tell any story you want. So again, you don't have to worry about the prompts. The prompts are there to make it easier for the student not to dictate specific information that they want from you. So again, purpose, it reveals the student's unique character experiences, interests, and strengths, exactly the same as the Common App. Here are some sample coalition application prompts. Tell a story from your life describing an experience that either demonstrates your character or helps to shape it. Describe a time when you made a meaningful contribution to others in which the greater good was your focus. Discuss the challenges and rewards of making your contribution. Has there been a time when you've had a long cherished or accepted belief challenged? How did you respond? How did the challenge affect your beliefs? I will say um, the first prompt here and the last prompt here, there is an almost identical worded a little bit differently, uh, but almost an identical prompt on the common application essay. This middle one, the meaningful contribution, is not on the common app. This is something specific to the coalition. But if that's what you wanted to write, you could put it on the common app and just use their question, tell us a story that's meaningful to you, right? So um, it, the, the, the ability to go back and forth between the two is perfectly easy. All right. Thank you, Coach Lania. Uh, we already know something about the coalition apps like, and also the common apps. Um, would you please give our students and the parents some like suggestion about their assets, what they should do, what they, what they don't need to do? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So um, as I said at the beginning, I'm going to focus on big picture things that you can take away today. Um, and then there are technical do's and don'ts that I would get into specifically in the writing with students. But let's start here. You do want to highlight your unique qualities and insights about the world. How do you view the world? You do want to provide specific anecdotes, and that's personal examples from your life, personal stories from your life, to tell a personal story. So specific experiences, not generalities. Um, if you say, you know, I really love uh, nature and have enjoyed nature throughout my life, that's a generality. If you say, I really love nature and I fell in love with it uh, during my family's trip to, uh, let's say, Pinnacle's, uh, park where I saw, um, uh, I think Pinnacles is in Utah, forgive me if I'm wrong that it's not in Utah, where I saw um, uh, aspects of nature, specific things that I'd never seen before, that becomes specific. So you're talking about Pinnacles to illustrate the point, not just generally about nature. So you want to be specific. Do show vulnerability and willingness to learn from your mistakes. In the common application examples I showed you earlier, one was about a challenge you faced, an obstacle or failure? Did you learn something from it? Very often, uh, this happens. And it actually happens more so, um, students sometimes do this, but actually often parents, is that parents really worry about a student sharing something that was a failure. They basically say, oh, no, 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 no. You know, my student wrote about this failure and how they overcame it, but, you know, won't the admissions think that they're like a failure <laughs> if they share how they had this mistake? And what admissions wants to see is not perfection, but maturity and insight, something that makes them a really a great student who knows how to learn, but also somebody who's going to contribute to the, the community in a meaningful way. So we want students to be vulnerable. You don't always have to talk about failures or obstacles, but we want students to be willing to say, these are my flaws. These are the flaws that I've had, and this is what I do to make them better. This is how I've grown. So show vulnerability and willingness to learn. Do share your opinions and demonstrate independent thinking. This is another one where I, I, I encourage this awareness for both students and the parents. Students sometimes have a really strong opinion about something, and then because they're afraid that the admissions reader might disagree, uh, that they don't want to talk about it. I'll give an example. Often people say politics, you know, we, we shouldn't talk about politics around, like, let's say the dinner table, right? Um, but I will, I will give an example. I have a student who is uh, currently at Harvard, and uh, her college applications essays were 
absolutely 100% clear what her politics were. And one could say that uh, people, a reader might not have agreed. I didn't agree with everything she said in her essay. I, I wasn't sitting here saying, yes, I agree with everything. But the clarity and the reasoning and the strength of her opinion made it seem that when the student gets to campus, they're going to, if they see something they don't like, this is what they're going to do. Or if they believe in something, they're going to fight for it. If, they, if, a, if a professor gives them information and knowledge, that student is going to take it in, think about it, reason with it, and run with it independently. That is exciting to an admissions person. So we don't want to have tremendously controversial things in the essays. And if I'm working with a student, I will often say, you know what, go for it. Let's see where it falls. And then we'll discuss whether or not we need to be concerned. It's easier to pull you back in than to... Um, to cut something off, basically, to pull you back in rather than to make you dare. But it's okay to share opinions, and you want to share that you have independent thinking, that you're not doing what everybody else wants. Very often, parents want students to, their students to, to do what they see happening around them because it gives them a sense of security. This is what other people are doing, so shouldn't my student do the same thing? Well, not necessarily, because if application reader gets 20 doing all the same thing, and yours is the one that does something different, yours is the one they're going to notice. Just do it well. Okay. And the last point, do take creative risks with your essay and embrace humor, creativity, and surprise. Yes, go for it. Try. I tell my students, you know, leap. Take a leap of faith. Try something creative, and then we'll revise and see where it goes. It becomes much more refreshing for the reader. And in order to do this, you have to write well. In order to write well, you have to start early. So if you wait, you can do less of these things about taking creative risks. If you start now, you can try something and say, no, nah, I don't like it. Try something else. That's what happens when you start early with the essays. Don't, don't regurgitate your resume. Do not focus on grades and test scores. Your activities... When I say resume, it's like your activity list. Your activities, grades, and test scores are there in the application for them to see it. They know how to interpret those things. You do not need to talk a lot about them. If you want to talk about one activity you're passionate about, that's a different thing, but you don't want a list of things that you've done. If, there, if your essay doesn't provide a different dimension than everything else on your application, then you're wasting space. You don't want to brag or put others down. Arrogance can come across in an essay. We don't want to be arrogant. We also don't want to be too humble where a student uh, doesn't have the courage or the self-esteem to really talk about what they're good at. And that's a place where parents can sometimes step in and say, you know, my son or my daughter, um, you know, doesn't really talk about how good they are at this. But I really think that they're, they're, this about their character or this about their talent is something that they're not talking about. That can be really helpful. Um, so we want students to um, be humble, but also actually talk about who they are. Don't avoid writing about your difficulties and mistakes. I talked about that. And do not present yourself as a cliche. So if you happen to be a computer science major, future computer science major, or engineer, and you happen to be from the Bay Area, okay, let's be frank. Um, and let's say that your idol is Steve Jobs. I say that because I see this over and over and over and over again. That all might be true. You cannot say that you're not that person. So allow that to be true, but find a different way to present it so that you don't look like a cookie cutter of hundreds of other people. Yes, thanks Lenny. I gave us more ideas about COMAP and also the coalition like ASSIS. Uh, we have around 20 minutes left because you see like University of California, not only popular like at California, but also like popular in the whole world. Is that possible we can like move to the UCs and then give us more ideas about this, the, the, the things about University of California. That sounds good. Yeah. So I will keep my eyes on the time and try not to be too quick in what I say. I'll just get really close to the point here. Um, the University of California system does not use the Common App or the Coalition App. Um, I know that many of you are probably considering the University of California schools, UC Berkeley, Santa Cruz, Santa Barbara, any of them, right? Okay. Uh, so we'll talk about that. I will say that there are schools like the University of Texas, Austin has its own application, for instance. Um, so there are big uh, university systems outside of California that also have their own distinct essays. Uh, we're focusing on UCs right now, but if uh, somebody is working with us, we, we dive into exactly what you need for each school. So University of California, four short essays that are sent to all of the colleges being applied to in the UC system. Now, they give you eight insight questions, which are prompts, to choose from. You only have to choose four. Choose four that will provide a well-rounded snapshot of who the student is. Each one of these is 350 words. So for the UCs, you are actually writing up to 1,400 words 
versus 650 words for the Common App, okay? So the UC actually gets more writing. Um, what's fabulous about this is that you get a almost a 360 degree snapshot, four different perspectives of who the student is. And so it's a great opportunity to do this. With the UCs, um, you know, uh, you basically have a broader portrait. And so the purpose here, show the students unique character experiences, interests, and strengths in four distinct ways. Sample insight questions. Describe an example of your leadership experience in which you have positively influenced others, helped resolve disputes, or contributed to group efforts over time. Leadership. Every person has a creative side, and it can be expressed in many ways. Problem solving, original and innovative thinking, and artistically, to name a few. Describe how you express your creative side. Describe how you've taken advantage of a significant educational opportunity or worked to overcome an educational barrier you have faced. So this is just three of the eight. They all tend to be really specific. Um, the UC doesn't have a question that's as broad as just write about something you want, which the coalition does, but they do have one that is a little bit more open-ended. So when we work with students, we help the student find what's the best snapshot uh, for their major, their passions, and to make sure that there's some variety for them. Yeah, and Lenia, would you please give our students some suggestion about UCSs, because that is kind of different than the coalition and common apps. Yes. So with the UCs, we want to keep in mind that they are reading many, 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 many more essays, okay? So we're talking about an application pool that, depending on the campus, might have seven, what did I see the numbers? 74,000 applicants, okay? So if you imagine that the UC admissions for one particular campus are combing through 75,000 applications, that's a ton, right? So readers are overwhelmed, they're going to read fast, and they're looking for specific points, essentially, to kind of see how the student works. So with that in mind, you... These essays need to be focused, 350 words. You want to use all of it, which is the bottom bullet point here. But they need to be focused, cleanly written fast. They tend to be a little less self-reflective and um, poetic. So somebody who is more of a poet, might, I might give them free reign to, 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 to play with some of that in the Common App. But on the UCs, there really isn't time for all of that poetry. You might have great language, but we don't have time to spend reflecting a ton. So what we want to do here is highlight your special talents and interests provide specific and clear anecdotes, personal stories to support each essay, show your ability to work well with and get along with others. Really important that if you have a UC essay, you have four to choose from, somewhere in there, one of those essays should show interaction with others, not just be about you doing your thing by yourself. Um, do demonstrate independent thinking and growth over time. Do show surprise, humor, and creativity, and use all of the space you are given. All right, some don'ts. Do not ramble. Do not go on and on and on. You only have 350 words. Do it quickly. Do it well. That requires editing. Okay, so again, why you don't do this at the last minute? I have students, I always tell them to write long. Your first draft for UC can be 600 words. I will help you get it down to 350 words, but we need to cut. If you write 350 words to start, a lot of it is probably going to be filler, and you're going to have to write again. So it's an editing process. You don't want to write too long, but when you start, write a lot and cut it down. Do not focus on grades and test scores, as usual. Don't brag or put others down, as usual. Do not avoid writing about your difficulties or mistakes, and don't present yourself as a cliche. Yes, as we all know, like, um, thanks, Felinia, about all the uses. And then if we want like to apply for some private schools or other schools, they already ask some like supplemental essays. Uh, we, we're going to have like why schools essays, why majors essays. Would you please give us some suggestion about this kind of type of essays? Yes, of course. So um, generally speaking, well, most people refer to them as the supplemental essays or the supplements, college essay supplements. So Let's just see, not every school has a supplement. If you apply to the California state system, for instance, San Jose State, um, you might, not gonna have an essay for the most part. Uh, if you have some special program, you might, but generally speaking, you're not gonna have an essay, so you don't have to worry about this. Um, but many schools will have supplements. The UCs do not have supplements. So lots of state schools don't, well, I shouldn't say that. It varies from campus to campus. Many colleges, first bullet point, have supplements. So uh, an essay called Why This College? Um, why do you want to apply to, uh, let's say, to Loyola Marymount University? Why do you want to apply to Boston University, right? Um, what excites you about the campus? Uh, that's the question, why this college? It's required for many, but not all colleges. 
In order to answer it well, the student really has to research the college's academics and campus offerings before writing. Um, you want to demonstrate specific knowledge of and passion for the school. So if I love a campus and I think it's really pretty and I want a small student to faculty ratio, some students will start their essay saying Santa Clara University has a really beautiful campus. I visited a number of times and I'd love to be there. And they have a really great student to faculty ratio. That means I'll get attention. Great, that's really nice. However, I can immediately come up with 100 other colleges that have that same description, right? So I will say to a student, please do some more research and find out what makes that specific school a perfect match for you. You have to dig deeper beyond these generalities. So that requires taking a few hours to do some research, having conversations about it, and figuring out what to put in this essay that actually makes it exciting. And then here it is, avoid shallow statements. Like I just said, great professors or beautiful campus. Well, everybody has great professors, at least the school thinks so. And everyone has a beautiful campus, a lot of them do. So I don't know how that makes them think you think their school is special. And then be specific. So if you want to major in neuroscience, talking about their unique neuro X program that only takes 20 students each year, I wanna be a part of that. That means you researched and know what the department offers. Or if you do want to say that it's something like you like Boston because you want to be in Boston, well, just saying I like Boston doesn't do anything. But you would say something like it's located in a history-rich rich, rich city, and I've lived in California my whole life and, and want to experience that history um, so that I know what it really means to be a part of this country's fabric. Okay, the idea is, is that these things need to be specific, not general, and uh, show passion and not be shallow. Purpose here is to demonstrate that the college's specific art offerings perfectly match the student's interests and ambitions. And from there, we have this thing called the why my major or area of academic interest. So I want to say some schools combine this question. Some schools separate them. Some schools only have one or the other. It depends on the application. Uh, Cornell, for instance, combines them. It's really long. Um, uh, USC kind of asks both questions separately in slightly weird ways, right? So um, it really depends on the campus. Um, but the point is, is that you can expect to probably have to answer this at some question. Almost always the, the major area of academic interest is going to come up. Required for many, but not all colleges, illustrates exposure to and passion for the subject. That means um, if you are going to major in anthropology, and you've never taken an anthropology class or can say nothing about it, you need to explain what makes that a possible major for you, right? So it may be like, I've watched National Ge Geographic and I've learned about anthropology. I haven't been able to study that in high school yet, but I think this is an area of natural science and history that's exciting to me, right? So the third bullet point, whatever you say you wanna study needs to align with the student's high school profile in some way. There, we want to see a thread. Now, on occasion, a student decides to pursue something completely new. Um, and I will say, I, I, will, I put this as a caveat because I've, I've, on more than one occasion, I'll have a student who comes in with a profile that looks, let's just see, say, they look like a, an, uh, a math student. And then suddenly, and it might be because of the student themselves, or it might be that parents have a different idea. All of a sudden, they've decided they're majoring in chemistry because someone decided that chemical engineering is a better career choice. Okay, and I'm looking at the profile saying, I see no chemistry strength here. What are we gonna do with this essay, right? So it's important to like recognize that the admissions people are looking at that saying, well, this makes no sense, right? So you have to make it make sense. So if a student is pursuing completely new, the essay has to explain why, and we have to come up with real justifications for that. You do not have to declare a major to respond well to this prompt. If you aren't disclaiming, declaring a major, you should, the, third, the last second to last bullet point, you should describe what academic subjects excite you in general. And you do have to research the specific majors. Literally go to the department's page and write down notes before you write this essay. Purpose here, illustrate with specific examples the student's understanding of and passion for the subject. Uh, yes, and as we all know, after the Y school, Y majors, we still have some unusual essays prompts. Would you please give us some idea about that? Because we have around 10 minutes left. So I think there are more students want to know more kind of different styles about the essays prompts. Yeah, so unusual essay prompts. Um, these are like the weird prompts. 
the fun ones, the wacky prompts. And students are often, some students love it because they're like, I get to do what I want. Some students are horrified by it and like, what am I supposed to do here? All right. Unusual essay prompts are there to challenge the student's critical thinking skills and creativity. You are more likely to see them for more competitive schools. You are more likely to see them for specialty programs. Um, what they're, it's part of it is also you're, the student is being forced to write more. So you're also demonstrating a willingness to really put in the work because you want the school. So um, some schools are famous for that. University of Chicago is famous for having lots of wacky prompts. Okay, first example, write a note to your future roommate that reveals something about you or that will help your roommate and us know you better. This is called the dear roommate prompt when people over the years, we all know this prompt if you work with Stanford. Um, and so it's, it's uh, that's not where you write, dear roommate, I like to study, will you study with me? That's where you write, dear roommate, will you be a mascot with me? Will you run through the woods with me? Um, will, we, will we learn to, to study uh, uh, Renaissance poetry together? That's where you kind of just go, okay, and have fun. Example two, you're on a voyage in the 13th century, sailing across the tempestuous seas. What if suddenly you fell off the edge of the earth, right? So get creative. I have no answer. There is no right answer. Student can't look at me and say, well, what do I write? I have no idea. What would you do, right? And so they get so many different answers. You have this great opportunity there. Then example three, I have no special talent. Albert Einstein once observed, I am only passionately curious. Celebrate your curiosity, okay? So these are the unusual essay prompts. There are so many different ones. Schools change them up. Uh, Stanford tends to keep them the same. Chicago changes it every year. Um, some of them will say, write your own prompt. Okay, but uh, it's a chance to get creative and they definitely occur on the college application. Yes, as uh, we have some students who would like to apply for the special programs. And is it possible we can give them some advice about special programs assess? Yes. So when we're talking about special programs and majors, we're talking about outliers, meaning most students are not applying to these programs, but a good portion will apply. Let's see that bottom bullet point to freshmen and undergraduate honors programs. So there are schools that have, you get admitted as a regular undergraduate um, and you can, or uh, a freshman, or you can join a special program that's an honors program and often you have to write an extra essay. So just starting with that on the bottom because that's the most common. I'll go back up to the top now. Professional and pre-professional applications often require additional essays. So professional means that the student will graduate with a specific expertise, not just a major, but an expertise when they come out. Um, the most professionalized of these that I can think of, and also the least common in terms of applicants, is the BSMD, which is a, a student who's going to apply to the bachelor's, but they'll roll straight into a medical program at that particular school. In order to apply to a program, a student there has to come up, write, of course, additional essays, not just about their undergraduate application, the typical application, um, but also uh, why they think that they're prepared to go to medical school, right? So how do you at age 17 or 18 already know that this is the career to, for you, that you're going to commit to it? You have to write a lot. And there's, again, another level of maturity and clarity that has to happen. A BFA, which is a Bachelor of Fine Arts um, and or conservatory programs. Some conservatory programs generally will be at BFA, you also have BMA, which is in music. Um, these are uh, visual and performing arts. So um, the Rhode Island School of Design, uh, Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, these are some of the most famous schools in NYU's Tisch uh, School of the Arts, which has the NYU Film School, right? If you're applying to a BFA program, even a dance program, you will generally have to either provide an audition material, that might be it, but you also might have to write an artist statement as well. Then we have pre-professional undergraduate programs in areas like architecture, pharmacy and design. Uh, people often have to explain why it is that you know that you wanna be an architect already and to go into a program that's specializing in those particular areas. So um, pre-professional and professional oriented programs often will ask the student to write more. Yes, and um, our student would like to ask, uh, would you please provide some like really, really general like suggestion? Uh, and that can combo with the uh, common app, collision, uses, supplementals, specials, because we already have like six minutes. The student is really like, I said, I want, I want this answer during okay. this like online webinar. Okay. So what are, what are the takeaways that can apply to almost all of the essays? So this is true for every single one of the essays. Um, and uh, it doesn't matter whether it's professional essay, uh, you know, pre-professional program, 
doesn't matter if it's Common App or Coalition, those are basically the same. Doesn't matter if it's UC's University of Texas, it doesn't matter what it is, okay? If you're writing an essay, number one, let it reflect the student's personality. We want to feel that unique person come through the page. Number two, include specific example from the student's life. That's how we know it's you. We want to be genuine and show emotion. We, I, I, it's important to feel it. I will often ask students, well, I'm glad you told me about that activity, but how do you want me to feel? I need to know, am I supposed to feel excited for you, happy for you? What happens technically in the writing? That's where the writing coaching comes in. What happens technically on the page in the writing that actually makes me, as the reader, feel emotions? Okay, that's really important. Um, show self-awareness and self-reflection. I talked about that. We need to demonstrate maturity. This is a key. I just want to say to everybody, please, should not sound like the parents wrote the essays, okay? So um, I've been at this for a very, very long time. I read a lot of essays. So I don't read as many as an admissions reader reads during a semester because I don't have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of essays coming from, you know, my batch of students that I'm working with privately, right? But I've read thousands of essays. And what I can tell you is I immediately know if this essay does not sound like the student. I know. I know, I can often tell if somebody has had a, uh, a lot of editors who were, where the editor was doing more of the work than the student. It immediately rings false. And I can often tell if the student made the story up, okay? Um, and the student thinks, yeah, I, I kind of did that activity, kind of made it up, okay? So the point is, is that people, when you read a lot, you kind of know, I can tell when the parent came in, this does not sound like the student, period. There's enough information through the different essays and the applications often to get a sense of what the student's natural feel would be. It doesn't mean a student, I mean, you know, we coach students in terms of writing the essays. I correct what students say. I talk to them and teach them how to rephrase things and help them get their natural voice out. But the essay has to sound like them, has to sound like they're authentic. It should not sound like a 45-year-old um, parent. Okay, so <laughs> we wanna keep that in mind. Then, of course, they should be well-written with good imagery and details. Great writing, particularly in this short format, is visual. We want it to be like a camera is snapping a picture of the student and their life, and we feel that they're real. Um, so that's, that's another writing technique issue that we really have to teach students to write really visually and with detail because it's not the same writing that you do for an essay you turn in for school to analyze literature. Has nothing to do with it, should not sound like it, it is not effective. It's a completely different genre. In the same way that movies have different genres, mysteries, comedies, thrillers, here we have essays for school, don't go to our, our genre for school, college application essay should be exciting, personal, emotional, detailed. That's what we have to do here. We have to learn how to do that. And then lastly, I keep coming back to this, every essay should create a unique portrait that stands out. So we want that student to be the person we invite to, into the school. Yeah, so there we have it. Yeah, thanks for Coach Linnea's sharing. We have the whole pictures about all the assets, what kind of difference. Um, as, we will, as we mentioned before today, this area is really special. Like the assets is really important, but the time is limited. Um, and we highly recommend all the students to start your college assets as soon as possible. The earlier you did and the, the stress you last. And also in order to help all the students, um, Harmony Plus, we did the workshop as crushing the college assets, uh, working with our coach, Lenia. And it's like five weeks courses and we'll, uh, we'll use Zoom to do that. And also it's limited for the eight student per section. And also students gonna know how to write college essays and gonna have some like writing te te technicals. And as, as you guys all can see, Linnea is really like high energy and inspiring. So we have the um, exciting like teacher environment. So it's better for you to feel the, the things like college essays is not that boring. It's gonna be interesting. That is really good opportunity for the uh, uh, working with Coach Lania. And also, would you please just give us a little like general like curriculum about this yes. workshop? Yes. So, um, cracking the college essay. Uh, we want to introduce students as early as, as possible to the world of the college essay. There's a lot to understand, and five weeks is how you can get started on this. So. Uh, the first week we'll be focusing on finding golden ideas. When I'm working with a student, I talk about it as uh, mining for gold. What is that special thing in your life that all of a sudden when I see it on the page, I'm like, that's the gold. That's the thing that makes me excited. Put that on the page. That takes some brainstorming. Uh, so in the first week, we're focused on how students will learn how to select stories from their lives 
and uh, choose the best essay prompts and how to get started. During week two, we then move on to outlining foundational essays. So depending on the student's orientation and uh, their writing skill, I'll, I'll get a sense of that with each student, we will be, be focusing on outlining one particular essay to get started and then we're going to move on to another one after that. So students will study the key elements of outstanding essays, including essay structure, style and techniques, and begin to outline their own. By third week three, students will be writing first drafts. Now, I want to say students will be doing writing exercises both in the class and the workshop itself. First hour will probably a 45 minutes focused on lecture and then there will be writing and critique at that time. And students will have writing assignments to do each week that they will be bring back in and get feedback on. So students will complete and receive feedback on the first drafts of one or two essays during week three. Week four, revision fundamentals in college essay research. In the world of professional writing and almost all writing, the phrase is this, writing is rewriting. Very rarely does someone walk into the room unless you've been at it for a really long time and just write the first thing and that's it, okay? Um, I ask students to think about it like sculpture. You bring the giant stone into the room. It has no shape, but you kind of think it's the right material. And then you chisel away until it starts to look like something beautiful, right? That's what we do. Uh, the first draft is that giant stone, the big picture. Then we start to edit. So people's editing skills is, um, is really critical and it has to take some time. So in wake four, we're focused on revision fundamentals and students begin to edit their own work. Uh, students also receive guidelines for the major and school specific essays. So we'll be doing lecture on both of those uh, and work on both of those so students can begin to research two schools which they will then prepare to write about. So then in week five, writing is rewriting and a game plan for the future. So students will further revise their essays and receive feedback on their work. And as a takeaway towards, you know, what can you do as you lead out of this class, students will create a college essay idea bank so that they have a bucket of ideas that they've talked about and have some brainstorming about. It might just be random notes, but notes on topics that they can use to continue as they go forward with their college applications. Yeah, thanks, Felinia, to share with us all the curriculums about this workshop. And then we're going to have some things to tell all the students and parents. We're going to use Zoom and Google Drives. And also we have the small classes and space limited. And also it's like if we have more like students sign up, we're going to open another additional section. And also, as we mentioned before, on the Harmony Plus, um, everyone's really take care of students and take care of families. So we have the TA assistant for the large uh, like classes. So we have to have high qualities and unique assets for the, all students. And also we have two specific section for this like a workshop. And first gonna be start with next Wednesday. And for the 20s, we're gonna st uh, start with uh, another section. So it's gonna, uh, uh, it's gonna be five weeks long. And then for each Monday or Wednesday, four, uh, four to 6 p.m. And also the fee is gonna be 750. Um, I really appreciate Coach Lania to sharing everything with us. And then I think because um, the time is uh, limited. And then if you guys have any questions, you can just leave in the Zoom and then have the chat with Lenia. Uh,我们每次微课堂的分享都不是标准答案。孩子,孩子的成长中也没有标准答案。我们试图用每个故事,每个案例,为大家带来更加广阔的视野,更加客观的认知,更加清楚的了解在美的学习,生活,发展,还